Does there need to be a sense of sacrifice in the United States? Well, I certainly, there's no sacrifice among the rich. You know, and, uh, there's plenty of sacrifice going on now. I mean, if you look at Iraq and now Afghanistan, there's been sacrifice. But I would doubt if you take uh, uh, the, the people on the Forbes 400 list, whether many of them had a child or a grandchild that served in, 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 in Iraq or Afghanistan. And uh, they come home in, in, in body bags to Nebraska, but they don't, they, don't, they, don't, uh, they don't have to call up anybody up at the country club to notify them. Warren Buffett called the financial meltdown in the fall of 2008 an economic Pearl Harbor. And he's given credit to the federal government for saving the economy. In this extraordinary emergency, he wrote, you, meaning the government, came through. And the world would look far different now if you had not. Buffett says, however, that the economy still has a long way to go before it comes roaring back. Is there a magic bullet solution, even though it's not something that could be cured in a week, but can people look forward to full employment they in a few look, they years? They can look forward to their children living better than they live and their grandchildren living better. But, but it will come back slowly. I mean, it is, it's not an easy thing. Uh, if I had a great idea, believe me, I'd have, I'd have been raising my hand and wanting to come on your program earlier to tell the world about it. I, I, don't, I don't have any brilliant ideas on it. I do know that business is coming back. When business comes back, employment comes back, and the genius of the American society has not been lost. How does the United States in this situation generate jobs, compete with China, India, and actually bring those jobs to Americans? Well, there's not a fixed number of jobs. The, the fact that other countries are doing well actually creates opportunities for jobs. The question for us is, are we educating people well? That's the number one thing. If you want to look at where economies improved, created a lot of jobs, even just look within the unemployment figures. Look at the college-educated unemployment versus, say, high school only versus dropout. And you'll see that the education system is what's out of whack. The demand is there if you have the, the right skills. That's not an immediate solution, but for tough problems like this, you really, it's only by looking at the long run that you, you solve it. Since you are known as a very clever and savvy entrepreneur, you took many risks, you embodied the American dream, if you like. Today, there are major problems with the middle class, with yes. small businesses. How would you advise kick-starting the economy today? I think, uh, you know, stimulating it with borrowed money probably, probably, is, and I don't like deficits either. I, I believe in balanced budgets and making a profit. Do you see a way out of this? Yeah. But we're doing it right now. We're correcting things. We, we've already paid off a trillion dollars of our debt in the last couple of years by not borrowing so much. We, we, we're cutting down on our borrowing and, 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 uh, and, and, and people are cutting down on their expenses. But prosperity will return. It always has, and I think it will. Do you see austerity necessary like Europe is doing? Deep cuts, rising yeah. taxes? Yeah. Yeah. We were spending too much. And that's what, uh, what, 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 what the conservative movement has said we spent too much. You know, I'm not exactly sure where it's too much, but some places. Where do you see the next big innovation coming? Well, you, you don't see it. You know, at the start of the 1980s, we thought Germany and Japan were going to eat our lunch and all we were going to do was flip hamburgers and cut each other's hair. And then we created 20 million new jobs. I didn't know where those 20 million were coming from. And maybe the people that created them didn't know. But we've got a genius to the system that creates jobs. You're an innovator. Where do you see innovation here coming? Well, technology will be used in schools. We'll have the best lectures available. You'll be able to test your knowledge. You'll be able to work with students who aren't uh, at the same place as you are. We should be able to drive some efficiency and excellence. How does one innovate again in the United States? Well, there's a lot of innovating being done right, right now. I just came up. Uh, this week from a, a conference on uh, mobile health uh, and what's being done with cell phones in the developing world to transport uh, uh, medical information to people and to gather it and it's just absolutely amazing the things that are being invented. Now they're not all being invented by Americans but some of them are. There How never America was. America never had a monopoly on, on, on brain power. You know we had, we, we, we've been very successful but on top of that you know, as time goes on, 
and you get more and more successful, that leads to some complacency. Uh, and, and, and you have to go, that's why you have cycles. The stock market goes down some days and goes up some days. Where do you see America in the next two years, five years? Well, two years, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't think uh, we will be better off two years from now than we are now, unless there is some nu nuclear, chemical, or biological uh, event. But, but the one thing I'm absolutely sure of is that the, the best years of America lie ahead. There's no question about that. But what has worked for 200 and some years is going to keep working, and we have unleashed human potential. We aren't smarter than those people that were around in the Revolutionary War time, you know, and we don't work harder. We just work more effectively, and that will keep on and on and on. It will turn out more and more goods and services, and I just hope they get more equitably distributed in the future. Some critics complain that the mega-rich might somehow be trying to shape government policy with their big dollar donations. I was opposed to the, the latest uh, ruling that uh, corporations can, can give unlimited amounts to, uh, to uh, people running for public office. The richest will be able to buy the elections, and I don't think that ought to be the case. I think that our government should be uh, run by the people and for the people, that, 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 that democracy is important, and I'm, I'm very concerned about that, and I hope that Congress will will overturn that at some point in time. What That's about a, climate change? You're putting a lot of money into trying to get environmental control. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm not putting unlimited amounts in. You know, it's, it's limited. The, the amount of giving you can do for uh, lobbying was, uh, was limited. I think that's good. I do not think that the rich should be able to buy the country. In philanthropy, it's very important to have diversity. And so if somebody thinks with the giving pledge or other things, that we're saying, you know, there's only one model. That's a mistake. We love the fact that we sit down and learn from these people, things they're doing, and everybody should pursue their own approach. So it's not a, a monolithic thing. It's, it's about doing different things, but still learning from each other. And I think the important thing is to think about how much wealth could go back to society from the giving pledge. I mean, that's the enormous positive. The financial dollars that come from the philanthropy, I think, are the initial wedge to try the experiments. And then it's really up to the democracy to decide whether to take those on. There's three things you can do with your money. You can, you can, you can spend it on yourself or your family. Uh, you can pay it in taxes one way or another. Have that. Or three, you can use it in philanthropy. Now, among the three, I take care of myself very well, and my kids are pretty well taken care of. Uh, I think I should pay higher taxes. Uh, but if I'm not going to pay it, I mean, the rest of the money I'm gonna, uh, is going to go back to society. It's just a question of whether it goes through the government or whether it goes through a private source.